We have to support our troops to ensure that they do the job and do it uh, and, yeah, reasonably well. There are those who also say they need to arm our security forces a lot more. You've heard several quarters that they're not as well armed as they ought to be. Is that true? Um, I must tell you that our armed forces have been supported in this war um, by a lot of commitment by the president, by the country, in investing in training, investing in weaponry, weaponry uh, investing in technical support. Um, a lot of the uh, supplies, you know, that I'm, I'm aware uh, that the armed forces um, had placed order to receive, a lot of them have not really arrived. Unfortunately, you don't just pick some of those systems uh, at the shelf. The kind of weapons we're talking about are not things that you go to Osho the market or we say market and buy. You know, these are weapon systems that you place orders and you wait for a while uh, for them to be manufactured and delivered. They are not on the shelf. Uh, a lot of uh, orders were placed, and I believe that uh, uh, as this war progresses, a lot of those systems are coming on board, both for intelligence uh, and weaponry. They will come on board, but we, these are not matters that we can really talk about, you know, on television because we are, we are facing an enemy. But the, the real fact of this matter is that this war has not progressed this way because of lack of weapons. Yes, we need more systems. We need more weapon systems uh, to support the army, to support the air force, to support the police and security services. And we're investing in it. We're really investing in it. It is actually the nature of the war that has been part of the problem. Our armed forces have ne we we have fought several wars in and outside the country successfully. Our performance in Liberia, our performance in Sierra Leone. Our performance in the Congo, even as far back as the 1960s, our performance in the Civil War, every international mission we have been to, Nigeria has distinguished itself at home and abroad. But the enemy we are facing, our armed forces have never fought a guerrilla war. We have never, the armed forces never fought the asymmetrical war we are fighting now. In the Civil War, it was a conventional war. In Liberia, it was a war of territory. In Nigeria, it is a war of an insidious enemy uh, that is not necessarily operating from a defined battleground and that is living among the people. So even when you know that a terrorist is living in this street, you must make every effort to ensure that when you get at him or her, uh, you do not harm innocent citizens. So this type of war is very difficult. And that was why even in sophisticated England, when the IRA uh, was fighting the guerrilla war against England, London became a victim of bomb blasts for over 30 years in spite of the sophistication of the British society. And in Moscow today, you still have attacks coming from Chechnya and other extremists in spite of the sophistication of Russia. So the issue is, um, it is if, they, if Boko Haram today were to stand on one side, whatever weapon system they are having, I can tell you that the war will never last for 30 minutes. That means wipe them out. The only, the only reason is that the nature of this war is different, and we want Nigerians to appreciate the army is fighting a different enemy, a new enemy on our soil, and we're developing tactics and strategies that will defeat this war. And it is those tactics and strategies and public cooperation, public cooperation, citizens' cooperation, cooperation of every layer of government, every layer of society, every town union, every church, every mosque. That is the cooperation that is required to place the army at an advantage against this enemy. So when people speak about uh, sometimes I hear a lot of comments denigrating the army. There is no better trained armed force in Africa than the Nigerian armed forces. There is none. I can tell you that confidently. So it's the nature of the war that has made it. Pro Look at America and Afghanistan. They are still broke down after 10 years. Are the, the, the Taliban stronger than the American army or air force? It's the nature of the war. So we Nigerians must understand the nature of this war. Instead of attacking the army, we should give them information to isolate um, the terrorists, the insurgents in our ranks, and the, in isolating them and striking at them is the job that must be done. It's not just a job of weaponry. You know, you don't need tanks to go and demolish a street if a terrorist is hiding there. You need information and a few trained personnel to do a surprise strike and pick them from there. That is the kind of war that we are fighting. So it's not a war of uh, how many armaments um, you have. Uh, and that's not a war. It's a war of intelligence and citizen cooperation and well-trained forces which we have, you know, deployed to deal with situations before they develop. That is what is, is on ground. 
So it's the nature of this war, and the press must help us to relate this to Nigeria. It's not the weaknesses of our armed forces. Yes, our armed forces need support and strengthening, but it's not their weaknesses that is responsible for what is going on. It is the nature of the war. Surely, I think, uh, well, nobody will ask uh, the government or the armed forces to go about uh, telling us uh, the tactics, but the information is very key, and that is what you're doing. And uh, uh, citizens are also uh, concerned about all of this, like uh, Emmanuel Ayewa, I want you to comment on this. He says, well, the cry for unity to fight the war should include government's transparency, accountability, law enforcement, and anti-corruption. So these are some of the things he wants the government to look into. Um... I have lost part. I, I've lost part of that question. But I had the beginning of it. The rest did not flow in. Um, that the time to the the, the, what the requirements include transparency, accountability, uh, information sharing, uh, anti-corruption in dealing with the war. Had that much? Yes. Um, governance as a process is all part of every strengthening society to defeat an enemy. Uh, there is no demarcation between every any aspect of governance. Everything we do daily in our offices, in our workplaces, is part of strengthening a nation to defeat any enemy uh, in the nation. But I must tell you this. Um, uh, Nigeria is a very complex society. And um, I can tell you that we live in a federation. We have local governments. We have state governments. We have federal governments. If you look at the theater of this war, you will note that a lot of institutions at those levels of government have failed for a long time. And because of that, you have seen this insurgency take root in the places it has taken root. And a lot of it are local problems that developed into fires that have become national problems. And the federal government is deployed as a firefighter to quench the fires. My advice always is that all of us at different levels of government must understand that our responsibility daily is to ensure the peace of our community, to ensure the development of our community, to ensure that we deploy the resources that come to us f to strengthen our citizens, give them knowledge, give them capacity, uh, give them hope, so that they are not easily distracted by forces of evil. So all of us have a responsibility, and I agree with you that this is exactly what the president has been saying, working together on all the issues, not just on fighting terror, working together on all the issues, working together on education, which is our priority. And on education, for example, if you look at the kind of money we have dispensed in the last 10 years through universal basic education for education all over the country, you will notice that if properly deployed, we should be further than where we are. But there is a limit to what, for example, uh, the federal government can legislate priorities at the local government and state level. Because that is where the level of education at the primary and secondary level lies. For example, this crisis is emanating from a state secondary school. And I believe that uh, we need more, more job at that level to look after our people at the grassroots. The federal government is more or less a service provider at this level and a policy maker. The real work for the growth of our society must come from lower levels of government that are closer to people. So I agree with you that governance is a very serious job, and that is the point all of us are making. We can do better, and I believe we will do better. Uh, also, a lot of it is difficult. It's not very easy at any level. Uh, <laughs> in government, we know that there, is, there are no easy solutions, but with commitment, with, with commitment, with sincerity of purpose, we can reach our targets.